Champ Elite. I'm your host, Coach Penn, along with the world's greatest co-host, Professor Haas. Today's guest led Florida State University to its 1993 National Championship, then created a shift in the paradigm, becoming the 1994 first round draft pick of New York Knicks. Please allow us to introduce to you, Mr. Heisman, Charlie Ward. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Oh, pretty great, man. This is, a, like I said, absolute honor. Absolute honor. So, Absolutely. so thank you beforehand. Uh, and, and very anxious to get going, man. I look forward to it. ASAP Elite. Could you please? I know it's ASAP normally means as soon as possible. So is that the same <laughs> same thing? Oh no, not near, sir. It means achievement, success, and perseverance. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we aim to bring, you know, knowledge and education to, you know, areas where the message is not you know, directly distributed, you know, you get what I'm saying? So just to close the gap and do our part, you know, in progressing forward with the, uh, with humankind, you know? So yeah. That's yeah. About. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of young athletes out there and their parents that said they were on the same road that, that you were on. Uh, and and they're, they're trying to have the level of success that you had. And, um, and so we feel that, that if, um, you know, one, we want to talk about sports, but we want to help to give them kind of a blueprint so that they know, you know, they 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 get to hear these, hear what what it took to get to the levels that you guys made it to. And so, um, our goal is just try to give back to the youth. And you know, this it, is this is kind of our way of of reaching back and, and helping out um, helping out the the younger generation. Uh, it's encouraging to hear uh, you guys are working to try to make that a reality. And you know, it's just it's really encouraging because you can do it from. <laughs> <laughs> different <laughs> different <laughs> places. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Absolutely. Sir. Well, well yeah. yeah, it just uh so I'm just I'm not gonna get into it too long, but you know, not just athletes, you know, your story translates to everyday life. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? So that's the benefit of Mr. Charlie uh, having a uh, Mr. Charlie Ward here, you know. So can you do us the honor of introducing yourself to the audience by explaining how you were introduced to football? And your career up until deciding to trade in the cleats for the hardwood. Well, and and basketball. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to word that the right way. <laughs> um, I mean, I I was born and raised in Thomasville, Georgia, which is a small town, you know, about forty five minutes outside of uh, north of Tallahassee. And so I was raised, you know, by two parents. My, my mom and dad were educators. Um, I have six siblings, uh, four sisters and two brothers, and um, and everyone's still living, you know, praise God for that. And it was, uh, you know, modest means. My parents worked hard, um, two incomes, but, you know, we still didn't have, we had what we needed, not really the stuff that we wanted, but we had a lot of love, uh, so we had a lot of support for one another. Um, and our parents raised us to, you know, be humble, um, be servants. You know, we were Christian, Christian family as well. So, uh, but for me, I was, you know, I, I always had a had a gift, and that gift was, you know, hand eye coordination. Uh, some kids you can see it very very early, um, and just their movements. Um, those types of things come easy to them, and everything that. You know, I did as far as that had a ball at the end of it that was attached to it. Um, you know, it was natural. Um, and that was from, you know, early age. My parents saw it. And, and then I just, that's really all I wanted to do. Uh, I, I, I tell a story that if I could be a professional athlete in the first grade, that would have been me. Because yeah. I, all I wanted to do was, you know, I went to school to, for, you know, recess. Yeah. And, you know, but I had to learn that, you know, if you're going to be able to uh, take advantage of your athletic ability, that you would need to do the academic part because that was the way it, way it goes. And so it was a bit of a challenge, uh, but I started to find ways to uh, grow uh, in areas that I didn't want to do anything like reading um I, I started to my mom she was a librarian 
and a go to figure, you know, librarian, you don't like to read, oh, yeah. but she found a way for me to read. Um, and that was through sports, something I enjoyed and liked. And that's something that I think a lot of times we get bogged down with trying to find, trying to help people through certain situations, but some, some things they just might not like, but we have to find other means, things that they do like to, to help them through. And that was very similar to me. Um, so, but I played every sport, you know, that you could think of uh, growing up. We made sports, you know, we made up games. I mean, those types of things. But I was that guy that didn't need anyone to play with. So I would go outside and shoot baskets by myself if I needed, if I had to. Um, I would go outside and, of course, it's boring to throw the ball to yourself and run and catch it. I'm sure all athletes of some form of, you know, that's what they've done. And that was just the way I was wired. And I was grateful to have a dad who's a coach. Um, so I was around it quite a bit. And, you know, I even cried times when I couldn't go, um, you know, whatever it was. So uh, that was just the way I was raised uh, from an athletic standpoint. And but what I learned over the years was, uh, you know, sports was just a vehicle or means to uh, building characteristics that would be long-term. Uh, one, commitment. Um, those who are married, you know, you're going to have to stay committed. You know, that's the goal. Right. And if you can learn that in sports, then, you know, that's something that will definitely help you, you know, long-term. Um, you know, accountability, responsibility, you know, being a great teammate, all those things I learned, you know, from playing in sports. And so that's something that I think, you know, going from basketball to football, the athletic part, you know, came natural, but learning those other characteristics definitely helped. Now, that was going to be one of my questions, you know, how you were able to translate, you know, the characteristics, moral, morals and values you know, that you learned and that you used to excel in sports in order to excel in life after sports. Yeah, so you definitely- well, I had, Yeah, I had coaches uh, that held me, held me accountable. Um, like I said, growing up, I was one of the better, best athletes in the school. Um, and so I was that guy that, you know, everybody wanted to, when it came down to being on their team, for a sport, you was always picked first. That was in elementary school because uh, they they knew. Uh, and so I just think, um, you know, being that type of player, but also coming from the background that I came from, even if I decided or wanted to think that I was bigger than, they always held me accountable, the coaches, because they knew my dad. And my dad was the one that held me accountable um, as well. And I tell the story all the time, but I had a middle school coach who uh, was, he was, he was a friend of ours. We went to church together. And so he knew me, but like, like I said, I was one of the best players. Uh, but doing one practice, I, um, I was, we were playing, I think it was three on two, two on one. And there was a ball that was on the floor. And I made a decision to not get on the floor for the ball. And, you know, I just stood up and tried to get it. And the other guy was on the floor. And when I was running back down the floor, you know, I was laughing. It was, it was just immature. It was like eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And so it was just immaturity. Um, but the thing that I, I remember the most is it was very embarrassing when the coach said, you know, I, I was called junior. So, cause I'm junior, uh, my dad's, he's senior. So everybody in my hometown that knows me or family there, they call me junior. So he told, he, he said, junior, you, you get on the line because you know, the ball's on the floor, you need to be on the floor. And you thought it was funny. And so I had to run a line drill in front of the entire team. 
which was uh, very embarrassing, especially at that age. And But there was accountability. And you're the best player. I'm going to hold you accountable because if I don't hold you accountable, then I can't I – mean, it'd be hard for me to talk to the next guy. And so that was, uh, that was very eye-opening for me. Um, and one of the things that kept me in the league was <laughs> – Every time the ball hit the floor, right. I hit the floor. And so, and I'll just there, but in college as well. But it's just, uh, you know, those type of life lessons that you learn from coaches. And I was grateful that I was able to, you know, learn it. And, and guys held me accountable for it. Yeah, that was definitely one thing that I never, like, you know, watching you play uh, with the Knicks and, um, uh, you know, hustle was, was what you did. You know, and uh, yeah. yeah, and and other than that, it's just you, you always had this really calm and cool demeanor. Uh, I remember watching you, um, your the the year you guys won the, the national championship, and it just it seemed like the pressure never got to you. Like you know, you all had the same look on your face. You you know, you're you're you, you never looked like you hesitated to do really much of anything. And so it was just, I mean, it was you're like if I remember anything. Um, about you from those from your from your college days, especially your football days, but even your even in the uh, your basketball career, uh, was just like man, this dude was just like as cool as a cucumber. The whole like no matter what the situation was. Uh, some of that may have had to do with my DNA. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm I'm just not a high wire guy um, all the time. I mean, there's and some people are, um, but that's just not me. Um, and I've always been, I'm an introvert, so I'm not seeking attention or limelight. You know, I would rather draw back from that. Um, however, I got thrust into all of that my junior year, uh, or a little bit earlier in college and even in high school, you know, with all the attention, mm -hmm. you know, it was still, I didn't, I didn't seek it or, or like it in a sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, or to be singled out for that. Um, and so I, I started to understand that, that God was giving me a great platform, however, to be able to share uh, my story. But it was, um, you know, that was just something I think I've always been that way. Like, you know, just everything, you know, comes and goes. You know, is it, it's going to happen one way or the other. Um, things happen for a reason. That's right. But uh, we all we all get frustrated and show our emotions. And so some do it more than others. And of course, I'm no different than anyone else. But, you know, when you have when you're confident in what you're doing, uh, you put the time in uh, to make things work and it's not working then you just, you have to rely on your work. The, the things that you put in, the time that you put in to studying and doing whatever it is you're doing, you have to do that. So, you know, having thir throwing 13 interceptions, my first year playing quarterback uh, was a challenge. <laughs> and, but it was something that, uh, you know, I went and watched video with my coach, Coach Mark Rick. Um, and, you know, we, we, nailed it down to, you know, just the simple things that we needed to do to try to get better. And, you know, once I, could, once I figured out that throwing the ball to the other team uh, was not good, which I already knew, <laughs> but I had to put it into action. Uh, once I figured that part out, then things started to get a little bit better. Right. Well, following your pro wonderful professional career, you've been very active, you know, I wanted to point out was your work with the Hope Worldwide Kenya Foundation. Yes, sir. Can you pretty much explain what you did there and how that was able to impact people? Hope Worldwide. Yes, sir. Um, I think that was. Um, I mean, I've worked with quite a few uh, organizations, uh, but Hope Worldwide is part of our church um, that we were affiliated with in Houston, Texas. And it's a part of the Church of Christ um, affiliation. And of course they do a, quite a few things in Hope Worldwide, whether it's distributing food, clothing, um, you know, 
mentoring, whatever the case may be. They do a lot of uh, those types of things for others. And so I was grateful that, you know, not just me, but my family, we get an opportunity to be a part of that uh, as well. That's uh, my church uh, back in Detroit was a part of Hope Worldwide also, but the Haiti mission, you know, I remember being a part of that, uh, you know, so I definitely wanted to touch on that with the, uh, you know, with the, what we have in common there, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, that mission. Yes, sir. Well, you were appointed uh, to the Tallahassee, Tallahassee Community College uh, District Board of Trustees recently. Yes, sir. How did, uh, can you explain to us what you guys got going on there? Um, yes, actually, I missed the meeting the other day, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did make the first one. Um, no, TCC um, actually, you know, it's it goes back to my 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 beginnings of college. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but you know, I didn't I didn't pass the SAT or the ACT coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. And so I had to have a gap year and I took that gap year to, to prepare myself to uh, make the necessary score to enter college. I received my scholarship and those things. And I was grateful that Florida State held a scholarship for me. And so I went and um, started mentor, getting a um, tutor. Um, and I ended up getting the score that I needed, but I went to TCC uh, to take some classes um, you know, of course, once you get to college, you're always taking your basic, you know, core classes. And so I got a few of those classes out of the way uh, while I was at TCC. And so now, umpteenth years later, I'll just say that, uh, I get an opportunity to be on the board uh, where, you know, you can kind of see behind the scenes and they're doing great work there um, at uh, TCC. And so... I'm grateful that they gave me the opportunity to be in a leadership role uh, and do whatever I can to help progress uh, the school forward. Um, but their leadership, uh, Dr. Uh, Mar Mardo, I think it's Mardo, Murdo, Murdo mm -hmm. is uh, president. And uh, he he's, has a, assembled a great team to be able to lead them uh, forward. You know, most community colleges are workforce mm -hmm. type colleges. Mm -hmm. And and so it's just uh, great that they they've been able to uh, partner with some some hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, some of the people in the workforce. You know, they've also been able to partner with Florida State as a bridge program uh, for uh, students who uh, may not be able to get into FSU out of college, I mean, out of high school, but they're like a bridge to uh, Florida State. Uh, a couple of years they go there and then they enter into Florida State. And so it's just another great school to be able to uh, help a lot of students uh, achieve their goals. No, that's that's good stuff. I, I actually, um, I, I, I used to teach at uh, HCC here in Houston. Oh yeah, um, so you know. They have a bridge between HCC and uh, U of H. And so I, I'm, I'm really big on the community college uh, level just because, um, you know, my when I taught at the University of Tulsa, um, I had, you know, juniors, you know, uh, 20 year olds in my class. Whereas when I taught at HCC, I had 18 and, and 40 year olds and mm -hmm. 43 year olds, 50 year olds and 20, you know, 27 year olds. So it was just the different makeup of the classroom was, uh, was, was pretty, just was, it was just a cool dynamic, but I love the, the, um, the connection between the, uh, you know, the, the work, the, the professional industry where you're talking about, you know, different uh, hospitals and businesses and whatnot that they commit, that they connect with to make sure that they're providing the type of training that those, that, that industry, that the industries in the area need. So this is pretty cool. Yes. And so, I mean, they, a lot of kids get, a lot of uh, so students, you know, they come in, like you say, different ages, um, you know, get training, get the training mm -hmm. they need. And, and so this is just another avenue, you know, in the, in the college or learning space, so to speak, uh, because everyone may not be able to go to a four-year school. Mm -hmm. um, they may be, they may need that AA degree or training uh, to be able to help them, you know, become the best welder. Cause I know that's 
one of the things, you know, welding, um, some of the things that they've taken out of high schools, uh, you can get that in, you know, the community colleges now. Because I remember we used to have all those things in high school, shop, mm -hmm. um, you yeah, know, they used to have food shop from years ago, man. It's still yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, they've taken a lot of those out, you know, home economics and you know, all those things. So they've taken some of those things out of the high schools now, uh, which, you know, everyone's not going to be academia, meaning, you know, algebra and those types of things. They go there for that, but there are other things and other um, resources, schools that people are interested in. Yeah, yeah. No, my my son is going to uh, Manville next year. Okay. I was actually um, impressed to see because you know I'm looking as we're picking the classes for his uh, picking his classes. They have on there. They have automotive and culinary arts and things like. And I was just like, oh, okay. So they 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 do understand that everybody yeah. is. You know, some folks you know are looking for um, more your technical college than your than your uh, traditional, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's it's good to see. At least I was I was impressed to see that on there um, yeah. as options. Well, that's good. That I know there are some schools that are bringing some of those things back, or mm -hmm. maybe they, didn't, they never took them out. But um, I know at some point they were taking some of those out because of you know uh, liability. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. You know, once we start learning about liability. You know, a lot of things start getting cut out, but right. I'm happy to see, you know, because um, I just remember being in chemistry class and learning about the uh, the safety, you know, and, and, and having the eye wash and all that kind of right. stuff. Right. Okay. Right. And, and you said earlier something about um, that you were fortunate that Florida State held out a scholarship for you while you uh, were able to. I, I'm sure Florida State was felt like they were fortunate yeah. <laughs> that out for them because it looked like it worked out pretty well for Florida State to hold that scholarship out for you. So well I think uh, situation. I think, yeah I think it's I think it's both ways, you know, even with the student athletes today, I, I just think it's you know commendable because they could have easily, you know, given up or given my scholarship to someone else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and I'm grateful that Coach Bowden um, allowed that to happen. I mean, he did that for not just myself, but he did it for quite a few players that needed, um, you know, Chris Winky is another one. I mean, Chris came in the same year um, as I did. Hmm. Um, and so we were in, you know, rookie camp together, a freshman camp together, and Chris decided to go and play baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, after freshman camp and he didn't come back until you know six or seven years later whatever however long it was he went and played baseball and coach gave him a scholarship so it's so he went to play baseball for a few years and came back and he still had a scholarship so I was you know grateful and that's just who coach Bowden is oh yeah well now uh Mr. Ward so once I began understanding football, you know, being cognitive, cognitively sharp, you know, well, sharper, you know, should I say, a little bit more aware, should I say, <laughs> at that point, you know, than I, than I became in the later years, you were the very first one that I could relate with, you know, and that everybody in the inner city of Detroit could relate to around my age group. You know, so you were pretty much the end all be all with the quarterback position, you know, because uh, Andre Ware came a little bit before, you know, but we were still relatively young. You know, uh, when you came along, like I said, then we were starting to make all mark, you know, really getting into a uh, pop Warner football and playing in the middle of the streets and, you know, saying that I'm going to be Charlie Ward today, you know. So I did have a question to ask you uh, for speculation resolution. Are you able to share? their explanation for your predicted draft position i was a third or fourth round the prediction was draft spot was third or fourth round draft pick and that was just as i've said before on other uh shows 
it, that was just the times. Um, during that time, you weren't going to get my type of player in the first round because the, the systems just weren't built for that. Um, whether it was black, whether it was 6'1", whether it was, you know, 190 pounds or whatever the case may be, we just, we weren't, we were, we weren't going to be drafted in the first round. Um, they were looking at that during that time. It was more so you had to be 6'3", 6'4", you know, a big guy, pocket passer, drop back passer. You know, I did all those things at some point during my junior and senior years, but people always associated me with like as a runner um i mean Which i, I didn't... was weird because you know I, I i you threw the ball much more than you ran uh, i i agree <laughs> <laughs> i only use only use my legs to get out of trouble and you know when i did run you know sometimes it was for long yardage but i wasn't in a running system um you know as i said i've I threw, I threw more passes in, in the um, the Florida game my senior year. I mean, I, I threw a lot. Of, I threw a lot. I mean, that's the you know, I had like fifty some passes or uh, forty some passes in one game, um, and so that that's not a runner. You ran <laughs> so, just as much as Gino Toretta. I'm sure <laughs> I, I did. Um, there are a lot of guys that I ran probably the same amount as. However, uh, as I said, the times weren't, it just wasn't that time. You know, that's just life. You know, we, we talk about how far we've come in our um, social injustice and all these other things. But during those times when we weren't where we are today, you know, it was just, it was just wasn't a time. I mean, at some point there had to be somebody uh, to, you know, start the trend. I wasn't that guy, but I was a part of that um, where, you know, you just, you just had to either, either be a part of it, which, you know, I had options. I was grateful that God gave me options to be able to do professionally that I didn't have to put all my eggs in the NFL basket. And so that's kind of where, uh, I reason why one of the reasons why I didn't get drafted because I did make that decision to you know continue to pursue my basketball uh, college career, which left the option open for me to be able to be in the NBA draft um, as well without losing a year of basketball or being in the sight of basketball for a year, um, and so. I, I just left my options open and I had to live with those results. Uh, if I didn't get drafted in the NFL, um, it would be for that reason that I wasn't 100% committed to the NFL process. They they knew that um, and they made their decision. I made a decision to say that, you know, if I didn't get drafted in the first round that I would consider my other options, which is a bold statement. And one of the things I always talk to people about is, you know, when you make statements, when you make decisions, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to live with whatever the results are mm -hmm. uh, based upon the choices that you've made. And, you know, you can't fault in one but yourself uh, for whatever the results are. And right. so well, I, uh, I didn't get drafted. And but that wasn't my. That wasn't the end of. Um, it just pushed me harder to get prepared and ready for the NBA draft. Sure. Well, I'm yeah, not going to hold you too much longer, but one, one second, I have to ask this yeah. one, Chris. All right, so one thing about Mr. Charlie Ward that was present was your <laughs> spirituality and religion. How much was that leaned on during that decision process? I uh, was well, definitely, you know, I was still maturing. Uh, in my faith, uh, even during that time. Um, however, you know, I had no clue what what was going to happen. You know, when I made these decisions, of course, they were prayed out and thought through um, as people who know me. Um, you know, I worked to try to think through a lot of things. Of course, some things you have to, you know, think 
or make choices right off the cuff, but um, but it was it was well thought out, um, and I was willing to live with those results. But definitely having you know faith and trust that God had a plan. Um, and now that I look back, you know, after uh, hopefully I have a book out. It's called The Athlete which is a, it's a pretty good read. Um, even though it's about me, it's a really, really good read. Um, John Finkel wrote it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just seeing how God's hand was upon my life through that journey. Um, and sometimes we don't know why, um, why things are happening at that time. Um, and, you know, just trusting the process, trusting the plan, but more importantly, you know, not just sitting there waiting, but working uh, while you wait. Um, that's something that I always talk about is, you know, people sometimes sit there and wait for whatever it is that they're talking about they want to do, but they're not preparing themselves to be ready for that opportunity when it comes. And so, as I mentioned, you know, I, when I made that decision, I had no clue. I knew that I had options, but I had no clue that I would be a first-round pick in the NBA um, and I wouldn't get drafted in the NFL. I knew that was a possibility. I knew both were a possibility, but being able to be drafted in the first round in the NBA uh, was definitely not something I thought about when I made that decision, like in January. Um, and so, but the thing that I was going to rely on was, you know, the work. Um, I was grateful that I had a coach, a basketball coach that took interest in me. He saw enough in me to be able to help me, you know, with my game. And he gave me a help work, give me opportunities in, in the basketball space. Um, you know, I was invited to the NABC uh, all-star game um, and end up winning the MVP. Um, of the NABC All-Star Game. And then I got an opportunity to go on a uh, four-country tour uh, with Nike, with uh, Coach John Calipari. And uh, it was a great experience. And so that was an another opportunity of a guy who has great influence to be able to share about his experience with me as a player. Um, and then I went on and, you know, I continued to work and put the time in with uh, Coach Eggman Williamson. Kenny Williamson, he's no longer with us, but he's a great, great man. Uh, and he knew some people in the NBA as well. And so all these experiences, along with my combines that I had, and my teams were very successful in the combines, um, all these things added up to me getting an opportunity to uh, be, be drafted in the first round. And so definitely my faith played a part in all of it. Uh, but I also had to put some uh, sweat e equity into the mix and your name. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I always talk, talk to my kids about basketball, biological and basketball kids or football kids is you got to make sure that your name, you know, people, when they see you and they see your work, that's what you want them to, to share. Because people are going to ask, especially if you're very talented, people ask you, well, what about such and such? <laughs> well, you want to make sure that they're saying, yes, these are the things that he's, he does really, really well. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's working on X, Y, Z, but you want, want your name to be good. Um, so you don't want someone talking about he's lazy. You know, you've got to motivate him to do X, Y, Z or she to do X, Y, Z. And that's just not good because that's really not what people are looking for. Well, you you mentioned earlier when you're talking about quarterbacks and 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 then you said you you, you weren't that guy. And I have to say I love your humbleness, but from from someone who who got to see your career starting from Florida State all the way through the end, you are that guy. <laughs> you are the the thing is is. With what you did in, in in college, you're 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 a top ten pick in today's draft. Well, that, that that's for another show. But the thing is, is um, you know that that was one of the things that I said. I, I remember saying that I said that a couple of years ago. I was just like, man, Charlie Ward would have been number one I, I, out out the box if if uh, if I mean 
you know, in, in today's drafts. And so, you know, that's one of the things, we, and like I said, and that, that's, that's another topic for another day, but we, and we really will dive into that. But, um, but yeah, so I, I love your humbleness. I love the, 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 you can, the, the, your love for God exudes in your conversation without you even having to, to, to say his name. And, and, and I, and I truly appreciate that because um, to me, to coach Penn, you're, you're a legend, man. Like, 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 I mean, for real in real life, you, you were one of the players that, that, that really made an impression on me before I ever got to meet you. And so um, that was a, that, I mean, I, I just, I, I appreciate the person that you are. And more importantly, as, as a, a believer myself, uh, I actually, um, you, you know, one of my, um, um, one of my elders, uh, Greg uh, Phillips. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, he's he's actually one of the elders. I'm, I'm a deacon at the um, Pearland West Church of Christ, and oh yes, and, and you know, meeting believers and and meeting people who who exude the light of God in them, that is definitely you. Um, you know, I, and, and you can just tell in your speech without you even having to speak or say that I'm a Christian and whatnot. And, and I and I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, yes, Greg. And, uh, you know, the Phillips family are definitely were neighbors, of course, as you know, um, when we were in Houston, uh, right next to each other. But, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I don't know about the legend part. There, there are some people who, uh, that are legends, you know, like Coach Bowden, he was a legend. There are a lot of legends that I've been able to uh, be around, but I appreciate that, you know, compliment. Um, and sometimes you know you don't understand it, especially when you're at home uh because <laughs> you have to take out the trash right why the legend gotta take that? <laughs> <laughs> it's called that's that helps humble you in, in a lot of ways but uh, i'm just grateful that i've had great experiences uh, been able to know a lot of people um, through those experiences and just, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, hey, I know you got to get out of here soon, but just to add on to that, like I say, you impacted p kids' lives in Detroit, Michigan. You know. In Dallas, Texas. Yeah, that's right. That far away. So, yes, sir, you are a legend. We can relate to you, sir. Yep, and the way uh -huh. that you carry yourself set an example for us, sir. Yep, but, you know, to close it off, I just have to put it. Do you know how cold you got to be to win the Heisman, then go play 12 years in basketball? And then go play 12 on, years. On, on the Knicks. On the Knicks. On that squad. Right. <laughs> that, on that squad. Right. You know, that's special. Yes, sir. So you, yeah, look, we, we will celebrate you, sir. Well, I appreciate it. But there's a lot of people who helped me. That's the reason why I was able to achieve those goals. Uh, like I said, I talked about a few of them, but. It was uh, when you, when I go back and look, um, you know that is amazing. <laughs> uh, but there are a lot of people who helped me to achieve, you know, those goals to be able to, you know, play at a high level in football, and then get an opportunity to play at a high at the level highest level in basketball. In basketball, <laughs> um, and so that's. Uh, I'm just grateful that I was able to keep people in my life that could definitely help me achieve those goals. And that's uh, definitely something our audience needs to needs to hear. Keep people in your life that'll help you achieve those goals. Yeah, well, well, like I said, I like, uh, I, I like that sign behind you, your head. Uh, practice. What, Pract what was practice it? like a champion, and also it says act like a champion. Yes, sir. Well, okay. well, thank you for being such an inspiration to me. And me. You know, yep. And it's something I can show my son. This is how you're supposed to carry yourself. And, you know, if you work hard, this is what you can get. Absolutely. I really appreciate you, Mr. Ward. And thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's Professor Haas and Coach Penn. Yes, sir. <laughs> I appreciate you guys having me, man. No problem. Right, thank you, man. Thank you for, for agreeing to be on the show. It was a blessing. blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't do nothing but smile, bro.
Right. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I just want, I know we usually. Yeah, for sure. It's just Charlie Ward, bro. Like, <laughs> I, like, I remember specific times in my life where, I, you know, like watching Charlie Ward, like I, I remember watching that national championship game. And, and, and also I remember not understanding why he didn't get drafted in the NFL. Like I, I like, I, I couldn't understand that for the life of me. I still never understood until I asked the question. Yeah. yeah. I heard speculation. This, that, yeah. and other. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I got a chance, we, we, we just got a chance to ask him the question. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. You know, like you say, all glory to God, man. This is a great interview. Many more funny. to come. The, the, I, this is this, that, the, you know, I've actually met, I got a picture with Charlie Ward. It's just the first time I met him, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a picture? I'll take a picture of us. Yeah, I got a picture of him now too. It's just three bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, man. Hey, I, I'm so that's giddy good. and just excited, man. I just man, I, I went back to 90, 93, bro. Went yeah. back to that. I was just a little kid uh, or teenager, but still a little giddy teenager, you know. Yeah, definitely, man. But all serious, uh, in all seriousness, uh, his story, you know, his evolution. Absolutely. You know, everything that was put on center stage for us to see was, you know, handled with such dignity, you know, and, grace. and gracefulness, Absolutely. you know, and you didn't hear him complain about things. Nothing. Every time you heard Charlie Ward's name, it was, you know, along with positivity, you know, well, and, and, overcoming. And he, he's the perfect person to talk to because, and the reason why I say that is because I know he looks at his skill set, the skill set that he brought to the table, and looks at the skill set of these quarterbacks that, that are being drafted in the first round, all throughout the first round. Because then you also have Lamar Jackson, who was drafted at the end of the first round. But uh -huh. the, looking at it and saying, Man, that was me. Uh, <laughs> that, that he's, was, he's the type of person that would never say it. Never say that. He would never say that. Yep. So that man, I'm telling you, the, w w when we do really get to discuss that and dive deep into it, it's going to be an amazing show. Y'all watch out. Y'all watch cool. out. Well, hey, Mr. Charlie Ward, we thank you. Audience, we thank you. Professor Haas, I thank you. Hey, hey sign hey, it up. Thank you, coach. My man, another one. Yes, sir. <laughs>